G'day folks. Oh, in the interest of keeping on with the uh, equipment autopsies and clearing some of this stuff out, let's start with this one. This is a heat exchanger for a water chiller and heat pump. A uh, swimming, pool, swimming pool heater, but could also run as a water chiller. Uh, it's made by Aquacal in St. Petersburg, Florida. This one suffered a rather nasty failure. It split down the side. There's a split through there. Now this outer, I think it's either PVC or polypropylene, I'm not too sure. But there's a big crack right through there below where the, the outlet or inlet. That's water, doesn't say. Out, yeah, that's water out, that's water in. So right near the outlet it is split. I'm thinking maybe it was clogged up with PVC residue from the extruder that it was servicing. Because as you can see there's some black stuff stuck in there and that's not algae or anything, that's actually chemical residue from the water that gets discharged over the uh, soft flexible PVC extrusion to cool it down. As soon as it comes out of the, um, the die head it's processed at certain speed and feed into a uh, conveyor belt which has flat fan shaped water sprayers over it and it picks up chemicals so I'm wondering if that's attacked the inside of the drum making it weaker because we don't run very high pressure in these it's basically just a swimming pool pump pumping the water but the design pressure for this is 150 psi this thing can take a lot more pressure than what we're putting through it but it's still failed uh, it's always had water flow, it does have a water flow switch and everything on it which should have been working fine. Um, if it wasn't working it wouldn't have been the only thing throwing up an alarm. So there's several switches on the process line which would have thrown up an alarm and just denied startup should there be no water flow. So it's kind of odd that this failed like this. So let's crack it open and have a look. I'm just going to take these 13mm bolts out of the bottom. Although knowing uh, American stuff it's probably imperial, but I've got quite a, an assortment of spanners. Yeah, see that's a metric 13mm, so these are like 516 or something. It does work, but only just. If they were any tighter, this would just strip the head. Anyway, let's put this up the top here and uh, work on a bit of a better location. Yeah, these are uh, 516 UNC bolts so you need a half inch spanner for them. 12.7 millimeters that's why a 13 mil is a little bit loose but yeah still very useful because I have all the taps and dies for this size. <laughs> anyway let's crack this baby open. Okay well that's interesting the thing that looks like a pressure tank is actually a uh, water baffle. Air water comes in through the top and just disperses over it through the coils which are in here. Yeah look at that and there's some PVC residue from the extrusion process. I wonder if there's a blockage or something in the water flow. This stuff's caused a problem. Mind you, it's uh, there isn't a flow switch on this. It's pressure operated. It's like a uh, pressure switch on a washing machine, essentially. I've seen them on these. There's a little diaphragm type switch up here with a probe going down to the drum. So as the water level rises, it pushes on the switch and tells it that it's full. I wonder if that got gummed up or something or maybe the pump wasn't running and there was a problem and the operator started it and caused it to uh, ice up before it could start. I doubt it though, there are fail safes on the system but yeah that's all residue from the PVC extrusion molder, chemical residue and that is not stainless, that's titanium. So I'll pop this up on top and I'll try and pull the core out of it. There's not much to see there, that's just glued in place with PVC glue. Hmm. Okay, well I ran out of daylight yesterday, but resuming again today, after getting the coils out and also talking to Terry at work, I found out this stuff here is the plasticizer from the PVC extrusion and it has a nasty habit of making PVC rigid pipe very brittle 
So he knew from the start that this heat exchanger would be doomed. And more than likely, that's what's happened. Yeah, there's a nice fracture going all the way through there and it keeps going up. Ice may have also been part of it, but look at these cracks. It's where the adhesive has spilt on it from when they glued the thing together. It's, found, it's picked that as a key point to attack and really got stuck into it. Yeah, there's hairline cracks all the way through there. I'll see if I can get a better shot of it. But as you can see, it's fairly thick. But that bit broke off. It's not exceptionally brittle, but right where the glue from the liner has contacted it, it's destroyed it. Could also... No, that's adhesive. It's hard to tell where it comes through. As you can see there, it's going right through there. That's the big split that opens up. But there's also hairline cracks all through there. Not through there. Yeah, they're not the most obvious, but they're there. So where the adhesive spill has created a weak spot, it's failed when they glued this whole unit together. It's not the fault of the manufacturer though, because we're running, PVC, running this on a PVC extruder instead of a uh, swimming pool, this plasticizer has made this outer surface very brittle and consequently the addition of the adhesive and chemical attack from the primer fluid or whatever they would have had in it and used with it has caused the uh, breakdown of this material. So there you go, that's a full autopsy on a heat exchange barrel. Off to the dump with that one. And some nice titanium heat exchange coils. Which are incredibly light. Very nice, very lightweight. There's a join point in the middle, so I could cut that and have two nice little uh, heat exchanger coils. You can almost flush it out with something, get rid of the refrigerant oil residue and make a still. Being titanium, there wouldn't be any oxidation or anything in there, would there? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more autopsies coming up. Okay, well this just got more interesting. I had to re-look at this because I realised the adhesive had come down from here where they've glued the fittings in. And here's the crack coming up here through there, but it's got rounded edges on it. If you look at it, I looked at it with a magnifying glass and it's not a sharp, fresh plastic crack, it's actually a cold flow an injection moulding flaw when two flows of material coming into the die meet up but only partially bond. Like it would have bonded enough to pass pressure testing but this plasticizer has found it out as a flaw as well as a combination of attack from the uh, adhesive so there's several things at play here. That to me, and I could be wrong but just the way that it, that crack has radiused nice rounded edges along it tells me it's partially a cold flow that's opened up and also helped by chemical attack from the plasticizer. So it's an unfortunate set of circumstances otherwise this unit would have been running today. Uh, it's been replaced with a large twelve and a half thousand dollar Chinese unit with a big radial four-cylinder Danfoss compressor, a large tank, I think it's a 250 litre stainless steel built-in tank built-in pump, everything. It's an all-in-one sealed unit, uh, contained unit. So we replaced that in a carrier unit with it. So it's not a bad thing. It's an excellent unit. But yeah, just goes to show there's interesting things. So that almost, that's a cold flow as well, where that bolt hole is. It's got rounded corners on it. If anyone's worked in plastics, you know what I'm talking about. There's a bit of a flow point. Either that or they're... No, they're not tool marks. There's one there. That's not tooling marks. That's all cold flows. That one there stops about there. There's cold flow down there. This is a flawed moulding right up through there. It's probably injected from this end. There'll be 
Well, there's ejector pin marks here. I don't know where the sprue came in. Probably off from the side. And cold flow there. Cold weld, you could call it. Yeah, bit of a shame. Made in the USA. But yeah, see flow marks and splashing. There was probably a lot of moisture in the material to cause the splashing, even burning. Overheating of the material causes burning. There's cold flow through to this water, this um, refrigerant tube fitting. That's adhesive from the PVC pipe. Yeah, this just gets more interesting. So, combination of chemical attack and a flawed moulding led to failure. Oh, well, that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching. Just goes to show sometimes you've got to take a second look.